Hey, 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 YouTube world, we are back. Hope you're having a fantabulous Sunday so far. Please download, rate, review, subscribe, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everywhere it is that you get podcasts. Also, I think it's down here. You can subscribe to the YouTube right about there. I'm not sure exactly, but also apologies if the lighting is strange. We have what can only be described as a smoky haze outside as I am in 30 miles away from fire country in California. Um, we hope for the best as all that goes down. And uh, today I want to talk about Earl Thomas because whew, that escalated quickly in the Earl Thomas situation. So it's reported on Saturday that Earl Thomas is sent home from practice on Friday and not welcomed back on Saturday. And then news comes out in the morning that the Ravens are going to move on from Earl Thomas just 17 months and one season after giving Earl Thomas a new contract extension. Baltimore released Thomas this morning, um, which they may be able to get back some of the guaranteed money by termination with clause because of conduct detrimental to the team, i.e. the Antonio Brown clause that got the Raiders out of that contract, might apply here to what we're talking about with, um, with Earl Thomas, and the last two years of his contract were not guaranteed, so they'll just take a small dead cap hit on 2021 and 2022, and so Earl Thomas now is a free agent, obviously, and Baltimore does the interesting choice of sacrificing the short-term talent for the long-term stability of the organization and showing that they're an organization that, you know, not going to create any kind of fizz, no one player means this or that or whatever it is, which is interesting because you don't think of Earl Thomas as a guy who breaks everything up like that. Yes, he's had flair and personality, but a lot of the releasing part may have been financially motivated, but then there was also the report this morning about Earl Thomas in this, um, the decision to move on came from the leadership of the Ravens, basically saying that we need to uh, move on from Earl Thomas um, just for the better of the team, which threw a whole weird weird situation going on there is Earl Thomas already has had a tough off season and now ending with his release seems to be you know kind of a uh, strange trend going on for the Baltimore Ravens and something that probably wasn't expected at the start of the off season I know he's talked about the Cowboys the Cowboys are connected to Earl Thomas it looks like Earl Thomas might be a Cowboy or a 49er or probably not a Texan but at least connected to the Texans and so there's this interesting dynamic going on between Earl Thomas, the player, immensely talented safety, probably overpaid, which is why no one would trade for him. And then this dynamic between Earl Thomas, who's now, you know, just kind of distracting, I would assume, which two odd, odd circumstances this offseason with Earl Thomas, both with the TMZ report about him and his brother, and then, of course, this one where he gets fined, fired, essentially, fined and fired, and then posts a practice tape footage of him not messing up that play, which got deleted but was still strange in and of itself. It's about a four on the Antonio Brown scale, if I had to put something in there, but there's this interesting situation going on with Earl Thomas where he's now a free agent just one year after getting a big contract, which... In hindsight, probably wasn't that good of a contract. It was a big contract, but wasn't a good choice by either Baltimore or Earl Thomas, considering the last two years weren't fully guaranteed, which I guess a lot of NFL players do that when you really think about it. So now there's this interesting position where Baltimore sacrifices the short-term fill-in at a free safety for the future Hall of Famer in exchange for Baltimore um, getting rid of the drama that apparently the brass of the organization was more than happy to get him gone, even if it was via a release like what just happened this morning. All in all, a really strange situation. I actually don't think it hurts Baltimore that badly just because he's one player 
who's a safety who was just better than the league average last season. Um, I think a lot of it was financially motivated, which wouldn't be, you know, a big shocker or like, wow, they made this decision for financial reasons. Like that seems to be a logical reasoning for cutting a guy like Earl Thomas at this stage, especially after, you know, they didn't invite him back on Saturday after getting punted. They essentially gave him the J.R. Smith treatment where it was like, look, we'll pay you, just don't come in. We're figuring it out. Just It was the, essentially the equivalent of administrative leave for players, I just realized, which, you know, you don't see it too often. But, you know, Baltimore released him. Now he's up, out there. I'm guessing the Cowboys will pick him up or the 49ers, probably the two best teams in the uh, NFC this year, just saying. So not a shocking revelation for going to get him. But it is interesting that, you can get Earl Thomas for five million bucks, not all of it guaranteed on a one-year deal, versus the two first-round picks the Seahawks gave up for Jamal Adams. I know a lot of it is names, too. Like I said before, Earl Thomas was just better than a league average safety last year. Um, so, again, a lot of what we're talking about is names, and the decision in and of itself isn't actually that detrimental to the Ravens or whoever ends up signing him, or Earl Thomas's legacy. Getting cut by the Ravens, even after a fight in practice, not that big of a deal. It's just where we're going to stand at this point as Baltimore made the move this morning. And, you know, like I said, that thing escalated quickly. I think since the last time we've been on the podcast, um, we haven't really had any of this Earl Thomas news until all of a sudden this morning comes to a headway and bam. Yesterday, they announced they're going to move on from Earl Thomas, and then 24 hours later, he's already been released by the Baltimore Ravens. And he'll find a suitor real quickly, even if it's not for his play on the field. It is certainly a big-name player. And you know the Cowboys need a safety. They need one on a one-year deal, and it's a big-name player that wants to play for the Cowboys.